It's one thing to tune into a show knowing you're about to spend some quality time with your favourite characters, but it's a whole different deal when they appear in a completely different TV universe to surprise you. There is no joy like the joy of a good crossover, and man has there been some great ones. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 TV characters that appeared outside their own shows. 10. Abed from Community on Cougar Town Community is an incredible show, there's no two ways about it. It has to be said that the heart of the show belongs to Danny Puddy's wacky, lovable Arbet, who has a serious obsession with pop culture. One of Arbet's favourite shows is Cougar Town, and there are various mentions and references to it in community episodes. One of the best of these references is when Arbet tells the story of how he soiled himself on the set of his favourite show, but we do eventually find out that he was just doing a bit from the film My Dinner with Andre. That would have been the end to that unusual story Story, but behind the scenes, the producers of both shows were close friends. So, as a sort of inside joke between the men, Danny Puddy was sent down to the set of Cougar Town to film a scene that was eerily similar to what Arbed described in his Dinner with Andre monologue. He even took it upon himself to run off mid scene as if he had, in fact, had a bit of an accident. 9. Katie from Katie Keen on Riverdale As a show, Riverdale is a bit like Marmite, but love it or hate it, it has been extremely popular. Since its premiere in 2017, Riverdale has become one of the most successful shows currently on air. The show is based on characters from the Archie comics, and when the formula proved so effective, the showrunners quickly got started on another CW show based off of other characters from the same universe. The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina was a another huge success, and it gets an honourable mention on this list because of the character Ben Button, who had a small arc on season 3 of Riverdale, and also made a cameo as a pizza delivery boy on season 1 of Sabrina. Next up was Katie Keene, another beloved character from the Archie universe. To spark up interest for the new show, the leading lady of Katie Keene appeared with Veronica in Riverdale, when the mob boss's daughter took a trip to New York. They get a makeover and take a trip to the bar where they share their love life woes, a bit of filler screen time for Veronica, and a free promo for Katie. How convenient that New York is just such a small place. 8. Jess from New Girl on Brooklyn Nine-Nine Brooklyn Nine-Nine and New Girl are two of the most beloved sitcoms of recent times. Both of them share the same distinct, unhinged energy, and really, you can easily picture the characters conversing with one another. Well, your imagination doesn't need to stretch too far. The two shows hosted a crossover event in which pretty much the whole cast of Brooklyn Nine-Nine appeared on a New York-centred episode of New Girl. Some of the interactions included Nick and Winston's failed subway show being watched by Boyle & Co, and Jess having a distinctly awkward, stunted conversation with the stone-faced Captain Holt. To be fair, if I had to quickly pick two characters that were polar opposites of each other, it would be those two. Getting back on track, it's actually the other half of this crossover event that's made it onto this list. In one Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode, Jake commandeers a frantic young girl's car. The glasses-clad girl never states her name, and we learn pretty much nothing about her other than the soup she's carrying is very important. If someone were to watch this episode not knowing any of the New Girl cast, then they'd probably think nothing of it. But combined with the New Girl episode, it's the perfect crossover. Very sneaky, Fox. Very sneaky. 7. Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers on Archer H. John Benjamin is an incredibly talented voice actor and lends his gravelly drawl to two very different well-known characters, Bob Belcher and Sterling Archer. Archer is an alcoholic spy trying to maintain his suave persona, sort of like an animated Don Draper with a cooler job. On the other hand, we have Bob Belcher, a rundown but lovable father of three who runs a family burger joint. Not much else connected these two men until season four of Archer premiered. The opening episode of the season begins with the titular Archer suffering from amnesia and shows off his new life as Bob, a husband and father of three that works in a restaurant. Sound familiar? Archer himself wears Bob's signature outfit and his family family are identical, just animated into the Archer style. The real crossover character here is Linda Belcher, as she's played by the same actor who voices her on Bob's Burgers. Watching Bob and Linda have one of their signature spats whilst Bob is covered in Russian spy blood is very unnerving if you're a fan of both shows. 6. Helen from Drake and Josh on Victorious Drake and Josh was a wacky children's sitcom that aired in the early 2000s about a chalk and cheese stepbrother duo that constantly 
nearly got into unrealistic but hilarious trouble. It boasted an extremely good supporting cast of actors that would go on to become Nickelodeon mainstays and icons. Besides Miranda Cosgrove's scene-stealing Megan, the most memorable characters come from the Premier Theatre, a cinema where both boys worked. Yvette Nicole Brown played Helen, who owned the cinema and had a history as a child star on the fictional show Happy Times. She made an appearance on Victorious when the Principal of Hollywood Arts resigned, coming in to shake up the status quo by making all pupils re-audition for school. It's always cool when children's networks cross over their shows to connect the worlds of your favourite characters, and although this character crossover is a small one, it was definitely a throwback for all you Drake and Josh fans. And if you forgot about Helen's intense nature, watching her singing takedown of Jade West surely reminded you. 5. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo on Supernatural Supernatural is known for having strange, out-of-the-box episodes laced with meta-humour. They like to switch things up to keep them fresh, which isn't surprising considering there's over 300 episodes. Combining these two shows makes a lot of sense, actually. Both tended to follow the same formula. A mysterious big bad wreaks havoc whilst the main characters figure out who it is and unmask the bad guys at the end. So creating an episode where our leading men get transported into a real 70s episode of Scooby-Doo unsurprisingly struck gold. The Scooby gang in its entirety make an appearance, and each character bounces impeccably off our usually live-action heroes. The most pleasing cameo had to come from Matthew Lillard's Shaggy. Not only did Shaggy and Scooby scenes with the boys provide necessary comic relief, but having Lillard play Shaggy in it makes him the only Scooby-Doo actor to appear as the same character in three different formats. 4. Chandler from Friends on Caroline in the City During the 90s, NBC were on top of the world. They were the proud parents of several hit late-night sitcoms, including Seinfeld and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But NBC's most famous show was also on air in the 90s, Friends. NBC came up with the idea to do a Thursday night crossover event in which some of their shows spent their episodes in a New York City-wide blackout. One of the most noteworthy crossovers came from the New York-based show Caroline in the City. In the episode, Caroline is browsing films at the video store when a guy tries to flirt with her. He's kind of awkward and he tries to impress Caroline by picking out the piano to rent, only noticing too late that she's actually chosen a horror movie to watch. He gets all embarrassed and freaks out and runs away, leaving Caroline speechless. The crazy part is this isn't just any nameless awkward stranger, it's Chandler from Friends. And once again, we're left wondering what a small world we live in. 3. David Brent from the UK office on The American Office. Ricky Gervais will go down in the history books for creating one of the best sitcoms of all time, twice. The UK office may not have run for long, but it's still considered a classic, and The American Office ran for nine seasons, ended years ago, but was still the most streamed show of 2020. The two shows were masters of cringe-inducing humour, and the champions of this were the two branch managers, David Brent and Michael Scott. While both men were different in a lot of ways, they also did share a lot of similarities, including their complete ineptitude in reading a room. It was obvious that at one point they had to meet. Well, after a long wait, we all got our wish during the season 7 episode, The Seminar, when Michael runs into Mr. Brent outside a lift and promptly mimics his distinctive English accent. Side note to all Americans, no, your British accent isn't as good as you think it is. The following conversation between the two is awkward and stilted, and honestly, it couldn't have been anything else. There was even a hug and a that's what she said joke. They seem to get along just great, although you do have to wonder how Michael would have felt if he found out Brent had interviewed for his old job. 2. Annalise Keating from How to Get Away with Murder on Scandal In the final season of Scandal, there's one episode that sticks out from the rest, not because of the endless drama bubbling over, but because of a couple of new faces joining the regular cast. How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal both have a pretty similar tone, and are of course both works of Shonda Rhimes, so in that aspect it wasn't too shocking to see a crossover occur. However, the problems become apparent when you take Annalise from her universe and insert into a show with a completely different timeline. How to Get Away with Murder makes several references to the former president Barack Obama and his administration, confirming that they exist in the universe, whereas Scandal has a completely different political backstory in which Obama just doesn't exist. It seems that what Rhymes didn't count on was that by importing a character from another show, she accidentally opened up a universe black hole that really bugged some viewers. 
One, Lil Sebastian from Parks and Recreation on The Good Place. The winner of the most subtle crossover character ever goes to Lil Sebastian, Pawnee's very own famous mini horse. Everyone in Pawnee, Indiana was obsessed with their local celebrity, Lil Sebastian. Well, everyone but Ben, he really didn't get the hype. The episode where we find out Lil Sebastian has died is probably one of Parks and Rec's best, and this episode introduces us to Mouse Rat's greatest hit, 5,000 Candles in the wind. We all just assumed that our favourite tiny horse got into heaven. It's nothing less than he deserves. So when the creator of Parks and Rec went and made another hit television show, The Good Place, based on the happenings that take place after you die, it wasn't such a leap to include Lil Sebastian in the show. In the season 3 episode, The Worst Possible Use of Free Will, there's a blink and you miss it cameo of Lil Sebastian during a flashback to Pick a Pet Day. And although the cameo is brief, it sets you up with a lifetime of wondering. Could Lil Sebastian be a resident of the bad place? What did he do? What could this adorable tiny horse possibly be capable of? God, I don't even want to think about it. And that brings us to the end of this list. This has been 10 TV characters that appeared outside their own shows. If you can think of any more crossover cameos that you loved, then let us know in the comments below. And of course, remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every day. I've been Amy from What Culture, and maybe I'll appear in your favourite show next.